Assalamu alaikum. This is the third video on the series about study techniques. We have talked about active recall in the, in the previous video. In this video, we'll be covering some other study techniques. So firstly, we'll be talking about space repetition. To understand about space repetition, we need to understand the normal physiology of the brain in the way how it forgets a piece of information. What you see on your screen right now is called the forgetting curve, also known as the Ebbinghaus curve, and this is how a brain can forgets a piece of information. For example, you learn something at point zero at day zero, and it is 100% retained into your brain. And if you don't revise that, that slowly decays in your memory and goes to almost 20% in one and a half day, two days, and you forget that. So what we do, every one, of us, every one of us does this, we revise the subject, we revise the topic. But how to make our revisions most efficient? Should we, revi should we revise one topic 20 times in two hours? No, that won't be efficient at all. So to crack that code, we, we need to know how the brain forgets stuff and we have to find out the hacks, when to revise to be most efficient. Scientists did different experiments and came up with this, that if you have uh, learned a piece of material 100% at day zero, it, you'd start forgetting it. And when it's on 40% of its original retention, you do a review, your first review. And the thing we discussed in the previous video that after reviewing a piece of information, it gets consolidated into your memory, so it becomes harder to forget. So after the first review, the memory is decaying but slower and when it gets back to 40% again, you do another review. As you're seeing here, the forgetting curve is easing, the slope of the curve is decre decreasing. When, when firstly, the slope of the curve is steep. After your first review on day one, it becomes lesser steep. On Then on day three, you do another review, it becomes lesser steep. Day six, you do another review, it becomes lesser steep slowly it will become less steep and steep and it will almost plateau when you do reviews at intervals and this is why we don't forget our abcs because we've reviewed them so many times over such a long period of time that they're in our mature long-term memory and we don't need to review them anymore it's that plateau phase here 100 percent plateau so how do we do it uh whatever a piece of subject we're learning we review that uh, uh, after one day, then after three days, then after seven days, then after 30 days, then after 90 days. So we'll talk about it more ahead. What is, it, what is space repetition? Space repetition is repeating a piece of information at space intervals. Five hours over two weeks is better than five hours in one sitting. How do you want to implement it? And what are the common mistakes? You don't want to implement space repetition uh, through passive learning techniques such as rereading or highlighting. You don't want to do space repetition by reading a chapter from a book and re and rereading that again after one day and rereading that again after three days. That won't be as effective. You need to incorporate active recall into your space repetition, active learning techniques. So for example, you read a book and you make you read, you read a chapter from a book and you make questions out of that. We've talked about active recall in a previous video, you could go over that. You make questions from that topic. Now, you review those questions on day one and try to remember what you have done, and then you review them on day three, and then you review them on day seven, uh, on day seven, and then you review them on day 30. The common mistakes with active recall is not reviewing them on proper intervals and keeping them at the end to review. So this is another example of active recall. May you're, you're doing chapter one on day one, day zero, then you do th this on day one, uh, after one day, then you do this on day three, then you do this on day 30. The, you'd be uh, thinking, what are these color codings? So the thing with active recall is when you're recalling something, piece of information, you need to recall it correctly. If you recall it wrong, you color that red and you recall and you do that question the very next day. 
but if you're doing proper correct recalls then the interval is 1, 3, 7 and 30. But for example you're on day 7 and you forget a piece of information and so you go back to day 1. So you come with that piece of information from day 1 to 3 to 7 you come back into the loop. And another important thing is when you've done 5 or 4 correct recalls. 5 or 4 correct recall means 4 recall means till day 30. 5 means till day 90. If you've done 4 or 5 correct recalls, then that is matured into your memory. Now you won't need to recall them anymore. About active recall and space repetition, you need to incorporate them together. You can make an Excel sheet for that, but sometimes that, become too, that becomes too much and too messy. You have your questions written down on a piece of paper, you have an Excel sheet in another, another place, and you have to look at your questions, find them to digitalize all this and to combine it together. You've got an app called Anki, and there are many other flashcards apps as well that combine active recall and space repetition. Uh, so the best way to do that Anki has pre-made decks as well, pre-made questions, but the best way to do it is to make your own questions, put them into Anki, and then do those questions over a period of time. They, uh, Anki would all automatically generate questions and give them to you every day. If the question is due one day, uh, Anki will give you that question. Then if you correctly answer that question, it gives you after three days. And if you correctly answer the question on day three, it gives you after on day seven. If you correctly answer that question on day seven, it gives you on day 30. So we were following an example. If you have been following from a previous video, we have been following an example of respiratory physiology, a small paragraph from respiratory physiology. And in the active recall part, we made three active recall questions of that, which were, okay, which were that how is surface tension generated? What is the law of Laplace? And what is, and how is the surface tension related to the radius of an alveolus? So how do we incorporate that example into our study technique space repetition we do those three active recall questions on day one and if we get them correct we do them on day three and we get them correct on day three we do them on day seven and if we get them correct on day seven we do them on day 30 and day 90 and so on so this is about space repetition well, our next study technique is elaboration elaboration is explaining the concept in depth uh, like uh, like we know we all know a quote that is attributed to Albert Einstein. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand well enough. So for whatever topic you are studying or learning, what you need to do is you need to go into the intricacies and depths of that. You won't be able to go into into uh, you won't be able to do elaboration for every topic you study, but the main and the important topics. If you elaborate them, they would get into your memory really well and you won't forget them and you would understand them properly and you'd be able to apply them. So you have to ask yourselves the questions how and why. How is it happening and why is it happening? What's the what is the basic mechanism behind it? And then you need to cross-link ideas. When, you, when you've learned four or five concepts, you need to cross-link them together and get better concepts into your brain there is a technique called Feynman technique. In this, what you do is you read a, a topic from source material and try to understand it. And after that, you put the source material away and you try to explain that topic to a child in an easy way, as in, a, in an as easy way as possible. And if you don't have someone else, you try to explain it yourself on a piece of paper. And wherever you feel you have gaps in your understanding, you go back to the source material and get over your weaknesses and come back and try to explain it again. This is called the Feynman technique. You can look up over on the internet about it. The, uh, you could also do elaboration by studying in groups, like one person understands the topic and try to explain it to his friend and vice versa. The thing about studying in groups, according to research, is that studying groups is only effective up to three people. After that, it becomes ineffective as it is more of a waste of time and it's not logistically as feasible so study in groups but up to only three not more than that we'll use our respiratory physiology example to tell you about elaboration so the question is okay uh, the question is 
why and how does the surface tension increase with decreasing radius? We know that the surface tension increases with decreasing radius because it's, written, because it's written in the book. But do we know why and do we know how? So we try to explain it to someone else. Once we've gone over the source material and we have understood how the surface tension increases with decreasing radius, we try to explain it to someone else. So I'll try to do that here. So for an exam for example, there is a large alveolus and a smaller alveolus and we know that the surface tension is generated by water molecules lining the alveolus. Another important property about water molecules or any molecules is that they have intramolecular forces, either ionic forces or covalent forces. So similarly water molecules have cohesion forces between them and like any intramolecular forces, they, de they increase when the distance decreases. When two molecules are closer together, the force is more, just like magnets. When the magnets are closer together, they attract more strongly as compared to when they're farther apart. So in a large alveolus, the water molecules are lining the alveolus, but they're farther apart because the alveolus is large. So the intramolecular forces are weaker. That is why the surface tension is less. Surface tension is less, the intramolecular forces are weaker. So there's less collapsing pressure on the alveolus. In a smaller alveolus, the water molecules are closer together and we know that when two molecules are closer together, they have greater forces in between them. So when there's greater forces, there's greater surface tension, there's greater collapsing pressure. That is why a smaller alveolus has more collapsing pressure and more surface tension as compared to a larger alveolus. And this is why surface tension increases with decreasing radius. So this was about some study techniques in this video. Thank you very much.